You know, something I used to always tell myself is, man, I just want to be financially established. I just want to be further along. I'd look around and it just appeared that everyone was doing better than me. Now, they were also a lot older than me and had been, you know, in their careers for a long time. I was just 21, but I just felt like I needed to really step it up. And I knew that the only way to get there was to actually become financially established. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. And I'm going to show you exactly how to become financially established. And what I mean by that is getting your footing, getting to a point where you can stand on your own without having to rely on anybody and also be able to get yourself some nice things along the way. But you're going to be doing all this while making smart, well thought out financial decisions for your life and not just blindly doing things because you can afford it. That's what this video is going to be all about. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Reggie Bryant. I'm the author of The Wealth Journey, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. Y'all know that intro was smooth, but um, we're actually going to jump right into the video, and I'm going to start this with a story because I really want to go back to what I was just saying. When I was 21, I was looking at the cars, like I've always had a thing for cars. Like even since I was little, I used to play with those like little Hot Wheels, you know? And I, I would just look at how sleek some of them would look, right? The cars, the places where people lived at. It just looked like so many people had things. And at 21, I really didn't know that much about money. I was making a good amount of money, but like as far as knowledge base and what to do with it and things of that nature, I really was kind of lost in all of that. And because of it, I made some decisions that I probably shouldn't have made, like having you know rent that was way more expensive than what it should have been. Now, the reason I'm saying all of this is because the first part of becoming financially established is understanding where you stand with your finances right now. I don't think I really had a full understanding back then. As a matter of fact, I know for a fact I didn't have a full understanding and that's okay. Life is all about learning, but if I can do something to help you start your journey, or if I could do something to help you improve your journey right now, I'm glad it's something that I myself have went through and something that I myself have learned from because I'm speaking from a place of experience and I'm not just speaking in terms of hypotheticals of what I would do. Like, no, no, no. I'm telling you what I've done and what I've done wrong and what I've done to fix it and things of that nature and just how my outlook has changed as a result of all of that. You know, I'd, I'd go to work and I worked at a really big, big company for my first job and I was in a management role there and I would just be outside and I'd just be like, man, all these Mercedes, all these BMWs, man, what they got going on over here, man? Like, I know this place pays good, but how long you got to work to get that kind of stuff? I was just kind of in awe and honestly... I was putting myself in a bit of a comparison trap. I'm comparing myself to like 50 and 40 year olds who have been doing this for a long time. But as my time progressed there and as I had like conversations, I got to understand what the deal really was. Even though my job paid everyone, I'm talking everyone at every single level, they paid everybody really, really well. Even though they paid really well, I learned through just casual conversation throughout the workplace that a lot of them were living paycheck to paycheck or they were living according to the amount of overtime that they were allowed to work and whenever overtime would get cut they would get so mad they'd be ready to throw hands just because overtime got cut they'd get mad at the manager like it wasn't the company decision <laughs> to, to cut the over it wasn't like the manager just woke up one day you know what i'm just gonna cut all no like the the company collectively cut overtime to save expenses it just it makes sense right but at the time people were getting so mad about it and i was like oh maybe maybe this is a little different but like it just it looks a certain way especially when you see someone who's good at their job and you're just starting you're just getting an understanding of how things are supposed to work you see them killing it at their job and you're like man they're probably getting a promotion they're probably getting a raise or something that's just how i used to think I'm just being honest with you. You go outside, they get in their nice, you know, Camaro and just ride off. Like, I'm like, man, it just, it, on the surface, it looks like they're killing it. And I'll never forget, one time I was in um, Food Lion, which if you don't know what that is, it's just a grocery store. But anyway, I just went to the ATM to get some cash because, you know, got to stay fresh. I had to hit that barber shop. You know what I'm talking about? Had to make sure that lineup was fresh. And like, as I was getting the money out, I noticed somebody had left their receipt. So I was just going to take it out and put it in the trash. So nobody else, I don't know. I just, I think it's weird when receipts just stick out of things, but like, I couldn't help but see like a gigantic number 10 K at the bottom. It wasn't really gigantic, but to me, it just, I was like, wait a minute. Like I wasn't even trying to look, but I just saw that number. I was like, 
it was like checking. It was like a few thousand dollars, and it was like saving, and it was like ten thousand dollars at the time. I had like maybe, I think I had between twelve hundred and like two thousand dollars in my like savings account, like to my name. That was what I had, and I was like, man, it's gonna take me forever to get here. And this is what I'm talking about. I was like, I was just talking to myself, like I wish I was financially established like that's what i consider to be financially established you have a good amount of savings like this isn't an emergency fund or anything like that this is just like a savings that you know you have that ten thousand dollar cushion if anything goes wrong i wasn't even thinking about emergency funds i wasn't even thinking about investments i was just thinking like man how can i have more of a cushion in my finances so i can fr more freely do the things that i want to do without having to worry about finances because when I first started, I didn't really have so much of a plan. It took me a few months of working and, you know, having those pain points and those fears of well, what if this goes wrong to actually start developing a plan for myself. But in that, I realized, I'm like, you know what? I don't know this person. I don't know how old they are. I don't know how long they've been working. I don't know how long it's taken them to get there. I just need to focus on being in my own lane and I just need to dial in on my own personal finances. Can we do that? Can we stop worrying about the cars that we're seeing? Can we stop worrying about the fresh clothes that everybody's wearing, the fresh haircuts and everything and everybody looking all glamorous and things of that nature? Can we just stop worrying about them for two seconds, please? Can we stop comparing ourselves to everybody that's why i had to tell myself i'm like you don't gotta do all of this bro you got a good job you got a good good you just you just got a college last month what you what you doing bro i had to humble myself because i'm like i'm over here thinking i'm supposed to be up here i'm 21 years old with a 401k a good job with benefits you know what i'm saying all these things that a lot of people aspire to do and I'm over here being ungrateful looking at what everybody else has. Forget everybody else. You don't know what their financial situation is. You don't know how their bills are set up. You don't know how their bank account is. You don't know if they're living paycheck to paycheck or if they're well off. You don't know. So stop comparing yourself. Just do you. Stay in your lane. Improve at your job. Improve your finances. Figure out how to manage your finances, first of all, before you even start comparing yourself. At least make sure you're doing the right things. And then and then we can talk about getting somewhere with that. But right now, just, just chill out, man. You're doing too much. That's what I had to tell myself. And that is my exact message to you. If you find yourself walking around comparing yourself to others and feeling inadequate and feeling like you don't have what it takes financially to get to where you want to be in life. That is absolutely not true. It's just going to take some time. That's that is the bottom line. That is the constant with everything in life. It is just going to take you some time to get to where you want to be. And that is perfectly okay. And I just had to understand, you know, I have financial limits. And I need to stay within these limits if I'm ever going to become financially established. I could easily say that, oh yeah, I'm making all this money because I was making like 60K at the time. I was, oh, I'm making all this money. For a 21 year old in a low cost living area, that's a lot of money, but it's also easy to mismanage that kind of money because my rent at the time was like 870. And even though I was overpaying for rent at the time, I should have been paying something like 700 for a single bedroom. But instead I got like townhouse with all these bedrooms and bathrooms and stuff I, that I didn't need and didn't even go to every room every day. But either way, even when I was overspending on rent, the rent was only $870. So being single, having a $60,000 salary, having that low of a rent, not having any car payments because my car was fully paid for, I didn't have too much overhead. So I could do a lot of things with my money. And not to mention the fact that the 60000 was my base pay, but I actually got overtime as well, so I really made something like 80 something my second year into working. So I'll say all of that to just let you know. I had to understand, what are my limitations? Okay, obviously, salary-wise, my limitation is technically 60 k I shouldn't plan to make more than that. Even if I'm getting called in left and right for overtime, I'm not going to expect that, financially speaking, because... Even though I knew that those fools were going to call me in all the time, <laughs> oh, I was like, you know what? Financially, though, I can't base my expenses off of this because this number right here isn't promised. Overtime gets cut all the time at jobs. And then I had to look at expenses wise. What are my restrictions? OK, obviously, I'm tied down to my rent. That ain't going nowhere. Right. I have a certain amount I'm going to definitely spend every month on haircuts and on groceries. Like I put needs, wants, everything that. I spend money on every month. I was like, okay, those are my limitations. So I know that I have this much buffer. I think I had like maybe 
$800 or like $700 or something like that at the time. And I didn't really appreciate or understand the impact of what that buffer of money actually meant. And by buffer, I just mean that's how much I had pretty much that I could just spend freely every single month. Like I really felt like I was balling out of control and don't let me get overtime. If I get overtime, I, I easily made like an extra thousand dollars per month just off of the overtime. So I had to learn to start treating that overtime money as not part of the buffer at all because again, that money isn't promised. So that was money that started going to my savings and that was how I started building up my base and that was how I saved my first $20,000 inside of like, I think it was like a year and a half it took me to save my first $20,000 but now that I think about it, I could have done it even faster if I would have been more diligent and understood what my buffer meant. So that's one thing I would tell you is look at how much you make a month, like after taxes, and look at how much you're spending every month. And if you're spending too much, see how you can cut back on certain things. But but don't get too strict about cutting back on everything. Like don't get to a point where you're like, okay, no coffees for me. I'm only going to eat beans and rice. You don't got to do all that, bro. It, it, ain't, it ain't that serious. Just look at what bigger things you can cut back on. Like if you're, if you have really expensive haircuts or if you're a girl like going to the salon or whatever, or getting your nails done or whatever the case is, if that stuff is expensive and you get it done every month, see how you can lower the frequency, see how you can do some of that yourself. Even now I cut my own hair. It's not because I don't want to pay a barber. It's because the barbers out here just ain't about that haircut in life. That's, <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. I moved out to Nevada and just out here in the city that I live in, I just don't have a lot of faith in the barber, so I'd much rather cut it myself. I think I do a pretty good job. So anyway, that's what I'm saying. If you can learn how to do some of these things yourself, you can cut down the cost. That right there can save you a lot more money than cutting back on like the Starbucks coffee. Like, are you kidding me? You better get that coffee if that's what you want to do. It ain't going to hurt your pockets. But anyway... Once you understand your limitations, you can start mapping out a plan for yourself. Like, okay, I know I have $600 in buffer and I don't feel comfortable putting all that $600 away, but you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna at least put $300 away. I'm gonna at least see, okay, I, I might put 100 of this towards my debt and keep another 200 that maybe I just wanna you know, take the family out or something like that. You have the power to do stuff like that because it feels good and you want to give back to your family because I remember I would like take my uncles and my brother to places like the movie theater and stuff like that. And I mean, these things might seem like small gestures, but it feels good when you can take, you know, everybody out and just pay for everything. Hey, don't, don't, don't worry. You looked out for me all these times. Don't even, don't even worry about it. Let me, let me go. I got this. And then be able to do it more than once. Like it just, it feels good. Things like that right there are signs that you're becoming financially established because you know, you know, I'm not worried about the money. I already got my savings. I'm able to go ahead and put this money. I'm, ba I'm putting it on my tab. I'm, I'm paying for everybody tonight. Don't worry about nothing. Order what you want. I don't, hey, don't worry about overstating your welcome. I said I'm paying for this. Order what you want. And that's just off the strength of knowing how to properly manage your money. And that's all I'm saying. And basically, I'm giving you a fancy way of saying, learn how to understand your money and learn how to save as much of it as possible and learn what else you can do with your money, whether it's you want to save, you want to pay off debt, where else that money could be going. If you want to buy something nice for yourself, you can put a savings on the side. I used to have these, what I call sinking funds in this app called Capital. And whenever I wanted to buy a new TV, I made a sinking fund for it. And it's just a mini savings account for a specific item. So one was for like a TV, one was for some shoes, one was for some suits. And like over to, and, and then one was just like a lump sum of money that I just wanted to send to the family. Like stuff like that right there, I'm telling you, is going to take you to a different level. And that's how you become financially established. Just getting that discipline to make these things and then make your goals real life. You know, I want to, a goal could be, I want to take my family out to eat. I want to take my, my whole family out to eat a few times a year. And that family could be like the family you live with. Like you know, if you have kids or like a wife or something, you can have that. Or if you're just talking about like your family from back home, you know, your parents, your grandparents, your aunts, your uncles, things like that. You could have a goal to have 20K in your savings account by the end of the year. You could have a goal to get a promotion or a raise at work. These are things that you want to always work on. And as you have these goals and as you write these things down, give yourself a deadline by when you want to achieve these goals and actively work every single day to get there. That's what I did and I promise you it works. That's how I became financially established. That's how I got to a point where I'm, I made sure that I'm going to get to a point where I never have to ask anybody for money. And you want to keep a mentality like that. And, and I was like, and you know what? If anything, people are going to be asking me for money. That's how I wanted to, cause that's how I wanted to position myself. I wanted to establish myself financially as the guy who has it together financially. 
I may not have all the answers to every aspect of life yet. You know what I'm saying? That was my mindset. I was like, I may not have all the answers to everything else yet, but for, when it comes to money, oh, I got it on lock. I have I have the management piece of it down. I make sure I save a certain amount every month. I make sure that I look out for my family members. I make sure that my debt is you know going down constantly. I make sure that money's getting contributed to my 401k every month. And I'm making sure that I'm constantly learning about personal finances. And then you know what you do after that? You keep going because you don't stop because this is the basics. This is just becoming financially established. Now we want to talk about being financially stable, financially secure, financially free. That's these are these are the stepping blocks to get there. And the way you do that is you set a routine. Check out my last video that I made about my money routine that I created to master my personal finances. Watch that video and watch the videos recommended within that video. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you are going to be golden. And if you're just getting started on your financial journey, or if you just want to overall improve your personal finances, I do have a book. It's called The Wealth Journey. Check it out. I will link it up here. I will link it in the description. Check it out on Amazon. That book is fire. I spent the first like half of the year writing it. I released it in August and it has gotten great, great feedback. And you know, it's a you know, it's affordable, it's a good read. There's absolutely nothing wrong with taking your finances to the next level and understanding where to go because that book covers more than just financial establishment and being financially stable. It goes through all the way how to become financially free. And if that's something that I can help you with. I'll be glad it's through that book and through the videos that I'm making. But anyway, that is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant. This channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. So you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.